Everyone, um, Ali Richards is going to talk to us about cloud mm. shadows and how do you say that word? Crest, crestbuckular. Oh, I, I think. <laughs> you know what? Um, why, why don't we jump into it and we'll talk about that title in a second. But uh, good morning, ladies, gentlemen, and non binaries. Um, my name is Ali Richards and I have a problem. My problem is EC2, but we'll come back to that. Um, actually, I have two problems, and my second problem is that I tried to be so clever about this title that nobody knows what it means. <laughs> and then my third problem, I guess it's kind of the same problem, is that I put the wrong, I put the description in the wrong field on paper call, so now nobody knows what I'm here for. <laughs> so why don't we talk about that for just a second? Um, so a better title, which I thought of yesterday after the schedule had been published and the slides had been submitted, might be using DevOps practices to avoid shadow IT. So for those of you who don't know what shadow IT is, shadow IT is the idea that somebody in your organization is going to go their own way. They don't like your process. They think it's too cumbersome. I'm going to do it myself. Um, I think that the cloud, the public cloud in particular, exacerbates this problem because it makes it reasonably straightforward and easy to do. Um, OK, so now that you know what I'm here for, I'll tell you just a little bit about me. I am a DevOps security engineer at Braintree. In Ch Braintree is a payments processing company in Chicago. And I am not here to speak for my employer. Um, in fact, I have a couple of horror stories for you that involve shadow IT-like things. Don't worry about it. Your payments processing is safe. None of these, uh, none of these stories come from Braintree. OK, so let's jump in. Once upon a time, it happened um, pretty easily. I was working at a large enterprise company, and we were a VMware shop, and I imagine probably a lot of you are VMware shops or have worked with it. And a developer came to us, to my team, which was the Unix and Linux team, and said, I have a new application I want to deploy. Here is my VMware image. It runs Debian. Well, we were a Red Hat shop. So we had some conversations about how that didn't work. And we kind of thought, that's weird. And then we went on our way. And that was sort of the first sense I had that, you know, what's going on there? Um, I have some other stories for you. The, uh, we heard this morning about shiny object syndrome. Well. I've worked with developers who really want to have the application run in Docker to the point where they start doing it themselves on an Ubuntu machine in a Red Hat shop. Please don't. Please don't do that. We need to operationalize Docker first. Um, I was telling you a little bit about myself. I did say I'm on the security team now. Previously to that, I had been on operations or infrastructure teams for, uh, for my entire career. So this is a lot speaking directly to the operations people, the infrastructure people in the room. If you're not on one of those teams, I hope that you still can take something away from this. Um, I've worked with teams that, well, we don't really know what that team does. Occasionally they come and they ask for a server and we give it to them. OK, I hear some laughter. Maybe that's some nervous laughter there, because I hope, I hope these stories, I hope these stories are, uh, are resonating with you. Um, but what it mostly comes down to is somebody coming to you and saying, I need a server. Well, sometimes they can be quite ferocious about their need for a server. And sometimes you have enough to do that you just give up and and give it to them. There is something happening, I think, in the industry, and we're all trying to keep up. So all of these things have happened in the last seven years or so. Um, 
turnover of the entire technology stack probably happens every three or four years. I hear some, pe I hear some people reading and getting to the end of it. So, okay. Um, <laughs> um, so if you have been in the industry for a little while and you start what you might start wondering, you might start feeling a little bit of a chill, you might start wondering what's going on with the industry. We're not going to have servers anymore. We're not going to have ops anymore. Does somebody want my job? Well, you wouldn't, you wouldn't be, um, you, you might, that's an entirely reasonable thing to think. Um, human nature is to be maybe just a little bit scary and to protect ourselves sometime. So that was my very long intro. Let's um, talk to, let, let's talk for a second about, I have what I call postulates um, about kind of, I cannot emphatically prove these things, but just how I see the industry going and what I think um, works best. So you don't have to agree with me. Um, I hope you do. So AWS, I know Google Cloud is here. With apologies to Google Cloud, AWS has won the hosting war. Now, I don't mean that they're better than, than Google Cloud or Azure. I don't think they are. But um, they did change the conversation about hosting. They are very popular, and people know what AWS is, and they know they want it, even though they don't know why. <laughs> um, I, I have some stories about that, too. Um, but we'll maybe get back to that. So what else? The cloud is a better way to run software. Now, don't worry. I'm not asking you to run OpenStack in your data center, although you can if you want to. Um, but the idea of services that do one thing that we can then kind of cobble together However you want to implement that, that's up to you and your organization. Um, but that is a better way to go. That is what I think. OK, if you build it, you need to run it. Um, the industry is changing. And didn't I just tell you that if you, some of you might have read this, spoiler alert, nobody is coming for your job. So why am I saying that other people should do what you might think is your job. Well, I'm not saying that. Um, but I do think that the, the, um, the changing language as we move from ops engineer to infrastructure engineer is a reflection that infrastructure is sort of a, needs to be a full member of stacks, teams, whatever we want to call it, applications. And we need people dedicated to support infrastructure and, if, and the People who are experts in the application need to support the application. So closely related to that is DevOps is everybody's job. It is a, if you ask five people what DevOps is, how many answers do you get? Eight, eight, 20, 20. yeah. Um, I'm gonna give you one. DevOps is a model for shared responsibility, communication, and empathy. At Braintree, we have a motto it's ask why, care a lot, solve together. I think that works um, to describe what DevOps is. Now, we could talk later about how well we've implemented it. We have a ways to go, but you know that's OK. We iterate and we improve. Um, here is another take on how DevOps is everybody's job. I will give you a second to read that. OK. <laughs> And I think everybody has gotten there. OK, so now I'm going to tell you a little bit about me. I already did that. Why am I telling you about me again? Well, because what I wanted to emphasize is that for 18 years in the industry, I walked into any company, 15 people, 50,000 people working at schools with, with the student data that we're trying to protect, all kinds of places, security companies. And they said, here are your credentials, your route. Day one, usually. Um, 
So I was never, I was never, and, and with that power, I was never blocked. I didn't always know what I was doing, but I could always do it. So we're going to take just a quick detour, and I'm going to tell you another story, because who doesn't want a story? Oh, and it's about Google Cloud this time. This is going to be exciting. Um, <laughs> so at a previous employer, it was an ad tech company, uh, somebody in marketing came to me and, I, and said, I need some help with Bash. And I was like, yeah, I can help you with your shell scripting. What have you got? Well, we have this Google Cloud instance. Oh, boy. Um, and it talks to data that Google provides us that's stored in Bigtable, and we pull it out onto the instance, and we do stuff with it, and we put it in another Bigtable, and then we run queries against it for BI-like things. I'll set you up in the account, and the, uh, password, the root password for the instance is 1234. We, we changed that password. Don't go looking for it. But I wasn't afraid for my job that time. I was afraid for the business. I was afraid for our infosec. I was afraid that we would get a GDPR takedown request and have no idea that the marketing team was over there with a different server that I knew nothing about. So what can we do about this? Well, I'll tell you what I did about it in an immediate sense, and then we'll come back and we'll talk about maybe some better models. But what I did was I took a nap. Um, by this time, I had been, um, did you know, by the way, there are cat pictures on the internet? <laughs> so this was about the time that I transitioned to, um, to Braintree and to security, and I had been on call for at least um, 13 of 18 years, and I just wanted to do something else. I was tired of waking up in the middle of the night. So I went off and I said, okay, I am pivoting in my career. I am iterating and improving. It was a very long feedback loop, but nonetheless. Um, and I went to Braintree, and at Braintree, I couldn't be root because I was on the security team, and you can't muscle in as the security team and say, you should give me all the access. And then I had no idea how to do my job anymore. Um, I didn't know what the process was. I didn't, it was, it changed probably three weeks in. I didn't know where the documentation was. I didn't know if it had been updated. I didn't know who to ask if the documentation had been updated. I knew a few people, but the people who, who were my people, the infrastructure people, the ops team, they were on a different team now. They liked to talk to me. We spoke the same language, but at the end of the day, they were a different team. So now what? How do I even, how do I even work? Um, well, while I was trying to figure out how I was supposed to work, I had an idea about all of those other times before. Now, I don't know in a black light if you even get shadows, what color are the shadows? But my, the, the aha moment there is that nobody's coming for my job. Nobody wants my job. Nobody truly wants no ops. Nobody wants serverless. They just want to do their job. That makes sense. Now, what does this have to do with shadow IT? Well, I know how to do something with AWS. I know it's not that simple, but you know, for brevity's sake. Um, but I know how to work with that, and I can figure out how to do that, and I don't necessarily want to, or maybe I do. If I'm an infrastructure person, I probably do, but I know what to do. So it's not that AWS is easy. It's not that it's fast. It's mostly 
that I'm comfortable with it in a sense, um, and that it's documented. And really the documentation is, is the important part because anybody can read it, anybody can figure out how to get their service up and running to an extent, right? But if a couple of people in marketing can set up an instance in Google Cloud, then you can bet that somebody with some development shops can set up in EC2. And sometimes the documentation is wrong, and then they fix it. When was the last time people on an ops team, an infrastructure team, fixed their documentation? Anybody? No, your documentation is stale, isn't it? <laughs> well, and you know, you'd think that, uh, anyway. So it's all about documentation. It really is. Um, I really am telling you that a major ingredient in the DevOps secret sauce is up-to-date, findable, searchable documentation. I guess that eliminates confluence. You would think for something backed by Elasticsearch, the search would be a little better. You know what, no, you, you figure out what works for your organization, but you need, documentation needs to be up to date, it needs to be findable, and it needs to be, um, it needs to be valued. The work for updating documentation needs to be full-fledged work. You should schedule it and make time for it in your sprints or whatever your, whatever your method is, but it, don't give it to the juniors to do um, just do it. So, okay. Um, another way of thinking about this is a very early version of this talk I was calling tear down walls and put up picket fences. Now, I didn't really like that, but fences do make good neighbors, but you need to know where the property line is. If you don't have the fence in the right place, then you're not going to be good neighbors, are you? So when you come right down to it, you are running a service, um, just like Amazon is, and maybe we should take something from that model because cloud is eating the world. Um, now, there is something, there is another trick to this. It's not just about documentation, it's also that the client has some responsibilities as well. Your customer, can have responsibilities, that's okay. What are some of the things that you want? Maybe you want um, your teams to think about high availability, about security, I gotta get that one in there. Maybe you want them to think about white box monitoring. I don't know what you want, you know what you want because you are doing the work in your organizations. But the client has responsibilities, now how do you do you declare by fiat what the client's responsibilities are? No, you don't. You shouldn't. You should get everybody together and you should figure out how it's all going to work. Now, a lot of us in infrastructure and operations have not had the, we don't oftentimes, not in the organizations I've worked with, worked with product managers, but a good product manager is quite gold. A good project manager can really help you do this. Um, and you'll see. Now, I don't know exactly how it's going to look like. Fortunately, we're all here at this conference learning about how to DevOps. But the idea is sort of quid pro quo. You do something, you know, I'll give you something you want if you give me something I want. You have carrots, you have sticks. We need to switch from a stick model to a carrot model. And uh, this is one of my cats, this is radish. Her name is radish, but radishes are also a root vegetable, so I put it next to the carrots. Um, <clears throat> okay, um, but what am I getting at here? If you make this easy and you get stakeholders to agree, then people don't want to do your job, they're doing your job because they don't feel like they're getting the help that they need. If you get them the help that they need, maybe that shadow IT will go away. So I told you earlier that I have a problem. Why are we talking 
about why am I talking about EC2? Well, because a server is almost never the right abstraction layer for something that you want to do, even as an ops team or an infra team, and certainly not as a developer. What people are really saying is, I have a new service that I need deployed. So you could go back to you know, this and say, OK, we talked about that. You know, Here is your carrot. Now give me one. Now we each still have a carrot. But you know, maybe we each have a carrot that's more to our liking. But you never want a server. Here's why. Well, you know, earlier I said maybe the cloud was a tornado. So maybe you don't want to deal with, now this is a little bit more of a technical reason, but I think you get the point when I say, and I alluded this earlier, AWS is a set of primitives and you need to use your own reusable patterns on top of it. I'm not a big fan of reading text off of slides, but that's very important. So I will read it off again. AWS, any cloud really, is a set of primitives and you should build your own reusable patterns on top of it. And you should document them. And you should keep that documentation up to date. Okay, now who is the AWS Google Cloud Azure OpenStack, if you want to run that, or custom thing in the data center expert in your organization? Probably it's you. And if it's not you, you know who it is. So you are the subject matter expert. You will continue to be the subject matter expert. Maybe you will free up some of your time to do things to think about maybe some of those carrots that we talked about earlier. Um, but if you are somebody who just wants to get their application to work and you don't know maybe that the storm is coming, maybe you just want a meteorologist. And look, she has dashboards even. Hey, we understand how that works. Um, but you are going to um, I think that as we, as we move toward, toward no ops and toward serverless and toward all of these kind of big scary things, that there's absolutely 100% a place for a meteorologist. And I, think the, and I think in doing this, what we really do, I said earlier that you were running infrastructure as a service, whether you liked it or not, but what you really want is to run a platform as a service and you want to treat it, treat your, your products as a platform. And once you do this, people will come. And it's cheesy to say if you build it, they will come. But I've seen it happen where somebody comes to me and says, can I get a feature enhancement for the chat bot? Or somebody in a completely different unit comes and says, hey, I heard you were doing this thing and that sounds like something that we need. And then we didn't have shadow IT anymore, at least that we knew about. So if you like to take pictures of summary slides, I have included a summary slide for you. Um, and that's literally all I have. So we're getting to, uh, we're getting to eat about five or six minutes early. Um, crepuscular rays, it's the opposite of a cloud shadow. Sometimes people think maybe it sounds heavenly, looks heavenly, we're in a church. You can get there with DevOps. Thank you.